Do your fingers stick out? Do you play unevenly or slower than you'd like? Well, stick around for my top five finger exercises to make your playing super easy. And if you haven't seen exercise number two that I call gold, then please leave a comment below. Hi, I'm Kylie, and we love to share easy tips and tricks to inspire students to learn the love of music here in our studios. Welcome if you're new, and I'd love for you to subscribe to join us for more teaching videos. Well, to start off our tips for today, let's look at an exercise that allows our weight to fall into the keys. This helps us to have a really warm, full sound on the piano that isn't pushed or a harsh tone. Watch that everything is falling. Lift and drop your shoulders, stick your elbows out, then drop them down. Lift and drop your wrists so that they go down past the bed of the keys. We can start by making an O shape on any key. Start slowly and check over your body. Checking your shoulders are down, your elbows are hanging, your wrist is falling as we play the keys, and that the bridge of the hand and fingers aren't collapsing at any of the knuckles. As we play faster, then our movement will feel more like a bounce. When we bounce on the piano, then our wrists will be bending like our knees do on the trampoline. We can change this O shape then and extend it to using two or three fingers in clusters. Just watch that your fingers maintain their natural curve and they don't collapse while everything else falls down. I tell my students that this next exercise is gold. When we play the piano, sometimes we need our fingers to all go and work in 10 different directions. So that's why we need independent fingers and for each finger to be talented at its own job. We can do a lift and drop game or exercise for beginner students. This is also a helpful one to support active fingers if you've had a break from piano and then are getting back into it. For beginners, we can start on the three black keys to make a natural hand shape. This can then be extended onto white keys Make each finger lift by itself and then keep it curved and drop straight back down onto the keys. Once you can do this, then do the lift, drop and add a slight stroke along the key. This will help each finger to be in control when we're joining sounds like legato or to make a really clear note if we're wanting to play short and sparky like staccato. Let's extend this by holding down other notes around the fingers that are lifting. Then double check that our other fingers aren't helping. We want each finger to do their own work. Start with single fingers and then extend into lifting and dropping uh, pairs and then three fingers of your hand. Much of our playing is supported by our wrist connecting the weight from our shoulder down through our fingers into the key bed. In this exercise, we wanna transfer the weight from finger to finger, like we've already identified with falling and we also want to look at rotation and also arcing movements. I tend to think of these movements as being led by the wrist, but everything around our wrist is affected and actually moving too. For beginners, we can start by making some shapes. We can lift our hand and do the royal wave, which allows a rotation of the wrist and forearm. We can then place this wave onto the piano and swing our weight from our finger five down to our thumb and back out again. The size of our rotation becomes smaller and smaller as our notes come in together. To make arcs, sink below the key bed, away from the thumbs, and then arc above the key bed back toward our thumbs, almost like semicircles. We could play a five finger pattern, but then also extend like some other exercises you may have come across before. Skip the second note, play up to five, arc over and back down to the thumb where we can repeat the same pattern. If we play this exercise with both hands together, then we end up with our hands arcing in opposite directions, which looks really cool. Our thumb is so important in helping our hand to play smoothly. We don't want any hiccups in volume or in rhythm. In this next exercise, our thumb needs to pass under our other fingers seamlessly. And this is most commonly done by going under our third finger or our fourth finger. Double check that your wrist is level and that your elbow is hanging. Pretend that your thumb is a mouse and it's sneaking into its mouse hole. The mouse hole doesn't move, it's the mouse that needs to be the one moving. After our mouse has played its note, then it can start to move into the mouse hole, reaching through and play a note and then peek back out again. 
Extend this by stepping further down the piano, moving the cave over the mouse and keep the wrist level. Make up a little game where you have a one finger cave so that the mouse is moving in and out of the cave while you play one, two, one, two, or one, three, one, three. This fifth exercise encourages an active thumb so that your wrist doesn't fall down or be pulled down by your thumb. We can repeat three notes. These could be groups of white keys or black keys, encouraging the hand to move over the position and playing them evenly in sound and rhythm. We can start slowly and say one, two, three, one, two, three, or cherry ripe, cherry ripe, or another favorite food that you might have. Repeat the same group of notes four times and then move up the piano, keeping the same pattern. This exercise challenges our evenness when we play fast and also teaches our hand to be relaxed and allow little circles or arcs as our hand moves around. Extend this by only repeating twice or even once as you play this pattern. Remember to say your rhythm aloud to check that you're stroking the keys exactly when you want to. So that wraps up our five finger exercises. Please leave a thumbs up if any of these were useful to you. I'll leave you with a quote from Vladimir Horowitz. He was a super famous pianist and composer who was known for his amazing technique, his tonal colors, and also his really exciting performances. The most important thing is to make a percussive instrument a singing instrument. You have to open the music, so to speak, and see what's behind the notes. I encourage you to build a strong technical foundation to express the story that you want to tell with your music.